This chapter is called Power Amplifier, and it covers three different classes of amplification, class A, B, and C. In this video, we start with class A. Here is an amplifier circuit, very similar to what we've done before. And so what we'll do is we'll begin with the DC bias and following the steps that we've done in the past. As always, we start with VB. Voltage on the base is equal to 2.85 volts. Then voltage on the emitter is equal to 2.15 volts. And then current through the emitter, which is approximately equal to current through the collector, is 9.79 milliamps. We continue by saying that VRC equals 6.65 volts, and VC equals 8.34 volts, and VCE equals 6.19 volts. We also calculate R prime C, which in this case is equal to 543 ohms. What we have done with these calculations is to calculate the Q point. The Q point consists of VCEQ, which equals 6.19 volts, and ICQ, which equals 9.79 milliamps. The Q means the quiescent point. Let's finish by calculating VC off, which is cut off, and that equals 15 volts, and also current saturation the maximum current that can occur in the circuit, and that equals 16.7 milliamps. The calculation we have just completed will be used to create the DC lower line as shown in the diagram above. Take VCE cutoff, which is 15 volts, and plot that on the x-axis, and take current saturation, which is 16.7 milliamps, and plot on the y-axis. Connect these two points with a straight line. Next, plot the Q point, VCEQ, 6.19 volts, and ICQ, 9.79 milliamps. Once you plot the Q point, we want to see if the Q point is in the middle of the DC lower line, which means that the circuit has been well designed. We now calculate the AC lower line, and we will plot it on top of the DC lower line using the same graph. To find the AC lower line, we simply calculate AC current and saturation, which equals ICEQ plus VCEQ divided by R prime C. So in this case, the AC current and saturation is 21.19 milliamp. Take AC current and saturation, which is 21.19 milliamps, plot that on the y-axis, and then draw a straight line from the AC saturation point through the Q point until it intersects the x-axis. We will now use the AC lower line so that we can calculate what is the maximum peak-to-peak -peak signal that we could put in the circuit. If we draw vertical lines from the Q point straight down and past the x-axis, and then we do the same thing from the x-intercept straight down, we can get a graphical idea of the maximum signal that we could put in. We seem to be limited on the right, and so if we make the signal symmetrical, we could almost calculate that it's about 11 or 12 volts peak to peak, and that's the maximum signal we can get from the circuit. But we have formulas to help us calculate maximum peak. We start with maximum peak, and we say it's ICQ times R prime C, which in this case is 5.3 volts. Then maximum peak to peak then is 2 times 5.3 volts is 10.6 volts. So we were pretty close with our graphical approach. The maximum signal, MPP, is 10.6 volts. Once we have MPP, we can calculate power out, which is MPP squared divided by 8 times RL, RL being the load resistor. So in this case, is 5.2 milliwatts. We return to our original schematic diagram because now we need to do some more calculations involving the efficiency of the stage of amplification. We begin by calculating the current in the biasing network. The biasing network is formed by R1 and R2. So in this case, it's 15 volts divided by 2K plus 470 ohm, which equals 6.07 milliamps. The current drain is called IDC, and it includes current in the bias network plus collector current. So in this case, it's 15.87 milliamps. The total power into the stage is called power DC. 
and it equals VCC times IDC, which in this case is 238 milliwatts. We now calculate the efficiency of the stage, and efficiency is indicated by the Greek letter eta, and it's equal to P out divided by PN times 100%. So it's 5.2 milliwatts divided by 238 milliwatts, so that equals 2.18%. It would seem that Class A amplifiers have very low efficiency, but there are advantages because you have one transistor conducting 360 degrees. And what that means is that you're conducting or amplifying the positive and the negative side of a wave. Also, Class A amplifiers can have very high gains in the hundreds. And so there are advantages and disadvantages, and in fact, there are ways to improve the efficiency.